everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the BSOC Bulletin podcast by the UNSW Business Society. I'm Adrian, and this week we are going to be talking with Vicky Samau, who is currently the engagement officer for the UNSW Business School, uh, specifically in the Career Accelerator team. And I guess, like, how have you been and what have you been up to recently, Vicky? Oh, hi, Adrian. Um, pleasure to be here on the BSOC Bulletin. Um, recently, gosh. Busy at work. I have a four and a half year old daughter who keeps me busy outside of work. Um, so yeah, and somehow we're in the middle of term two. So I'm not sure about you, but I don't know where this year went. To give students a bit of context, are you able to give a bit of a brief overview of uh, how you got to become an engagement officer and what you've currently um, got to do in the role? Yeah. So if you throw back to many years ago when I um, was studying. I was studying at UNSW and I did my Bachelor of Arts here at um, UNSW and it was a degree I chose just because I was interested in so many things um, and I just was like okay well this can tackle a lot of stuff so doing an arts degree it's really good for your critical thinking, communication skills, a lot of like cultural and contextual knowledge and you're always coming out of things like with different perspectives and contexts so that was kind of like the seedlings of um, some groundwork of my whole career really um, and then after I finished my undergrad I did my postgrad so I did a master's of communications at Deakin um, which is over in Melbourne so I'd planned to fly over and do it there and have a bit of an experience but I got a job at the same time um, at the Department of Education so I actually was doing distance learning a long time ago um, and Deakin are quite good at that so that was my master's and then since then I've worked in education my entire career so in the government sector, private and corporate sectors, um, and in the last seven years I've been at the uni. So my roles have kind of spanned across what is considered as communications, um, so across publications and writing, editing, coordinating um, projects, so textbooks, so those textbooks that you buy at the UNSW bookshop. You know, I used to work on some of the, the editions of them um, prior to that. Uh, and then I moved into more active roles in engagement and communications, and that was kind of a pivot point in um my career because I guess I was very publishing focused before that um, and the reason why that happened was I guess I was in my publishing career and I just didn't feel like an active participant I realized that I was a bit detached from my audience like even though I was creating textbooks or when I was working at the Australian Museum I was working on exhibitions but I didn't have that active engagement with my audience I kind of craved that but I didn't know what to do with that and um, what I did do was i left my job and I moved to Spain for a while with um, who's my now husband and we did an intensive course to teach English we we're like yep we're going to be English teachers in Spain and yeah teaching kind of came naturally to me and I really enjoyed that sort of personal engagement um, as well and you come back home and things aren't the same you know you go back to what was your original career and you're like yeah, this isn't really working out for me like oh god you know I thought this is what I was going to do um, and then it was around that same time that engagement became a job so that was not a job even when I was at uni let alone when I was at high school um, and engagement it kind of was able to pull in all my teaching experience all of my communications experience and also make it practical so it's yeah, that's pretty much been the basis of the roles that I've had at UNSW so um, so my first role at the uni was at UNSW Global so I was focusing um, on international pathway students so students that have moved from countries to study um, English here to then get into the university and after I was working there I started work here in um, the Career Accelerator team as an engagement officer and my role here is um, very dynamic and diverse and I have the pleasure of working with our affiliated clubs and societies of which BSOC is one of our partners um, and yeah and, in, and also having a key role in engaging our wider student community of over 16,000 students um, with everything that we do in Career Accelerator and building a sense of community and belonging as well. Yeah I think um, especially from like the experience that you've had I would say it's quite div diverse focusing on the um, engagement officer role. What have you currently got planned for uh, UNSW business school students? Okay well there are a few things that are always happening and then I guess a part of that is also 
being responsive as well. So in general, at Career Accelerator, our priority is to connect industry, academics and students to each other and being responsive to the shared needs and sort of curating opportunities. Um, but we do have some things that we're always running each term. So for example, we have business insights um, and that's part of our networking portfolio. And that's where we'll have like an industry partner um, that will either online or in person. But at the moment, it's um, usually online and they'll speak on a topic um, and then there's an opportunity to engage with that industry partner and in a QA. and um, And then we have industry extra, which is kind of like a level up on that and it'll have some practical elements to it. So it might be a bit of um, a panel and a discussion or it might be a bit of a workshop. So it's sort of leveling up and it goes for a bit longer as well. And that's always in flex week, so in week six. And then we have community Wednesdays and they happen in the first three weeks of term. Um, and the idea of Community Wednesday sort of sparked last year when we were all uh, at home and, um, you know, really wanting that community touch point as, um, you know, as we go into term and especially for our um, new students through O Week, you know, you would normally go to O Week and get to meet people on campus and we didn't have that anymore. But even though things are shifting, um, it still holds value. It's predominantly online community Wednesdays and it's an opportunity for the business school to host um, events for business school students, um, our industry partners and career accelerator to host um, events for our students and also the society. So we get our affiliated societies involved and if there's anything that they want to sort of plug into community Wednesdays to sort of, you know, have that outreach in the first three weeks of term, there's that opportunity as well. So it's a very diverse range of inclusive events that we host um, every term. So those kinds of our mainstays. Um, and then we also just, we have different things that are running like pilots, um, some pilots end up being mainstays as well. Our clubs and societies or academics have ideas um, and we're able to sort of be in the midpoint where we can sort of connect and enable and facilitate or engage. So, for example, um, this term we have the second run of FMAA working with the School of Banking and Finance um, with lecturer Ian Kwan and they do a finance careers showcase. So that's really focusing on specific skills um, within an industry and creating a showcase. Um, Capital W, which is our Women in Business Society, they also work with the School of Banking and Finance with Natalie O and they're doing an InterVarsity Tech Literacy Series um, this term as well. And um, even this is new, right? So this is like something that popped up. It wasn't, you know, on my year plan um, in January, but now it is. That's one thing I'm definitely appreciative of at UNSW is the commitment that um, the university has to societies in uh, particular. I know for a lot of students, especially me, like I came from a regional background. So that was like the main point of contact that I had with connecting to students and staff alike. In terms of last year, was it difficult in the transition going online, making uh, students engaged, I guess? You know what? At first, of course, it was a shock. And not just, you know, for us in our roles, but just in our personal lives too, right? But in the strangest of ways, it brought our community closer. And I, and I work with all 26 of our affiliated societies and work extremely close with BSOC um, as they're a partner of um, the business school. And, you know, I was just really thankful that earlier that year, I said, hey, guys, we're all going to be on teams together. I was really happy for that decision. I, you know, I didn't realise it was going to come in so handy later in the year. Um, but, yeah, what it enabled us to do, because we do have that affiliated society network, was come together and be like, right, like, how are things going? How can we work together? Um, what do we need to address, you know? And we also launched last year a community engagement committee, and this is a committee that runs monthly um, and with the societies, presidents um, or the partner societies like BSOC would either chair, uh, you know, multiple committees and what the community engagement committee allowed was that presidents from societies across the year were able to get together, bring together agenda items um, that were sort of on the ground issues or gaps or, you know, FYIs for the faculty to raise to our attention. And similarly, we had agenda items as well for our student leaders. And we would meet monthly, kind of nut out some stuff and go, right, what's the action points? And so that really became a pulse point last year. You know, for example, when online exams were a new thing, 
you know there was a lot of disruption and confusion and you know especially when you're online you're you're only seeing what you see online you're not having that conversation necessarily with the person next to you or you know going up to your tutor you still can in an online environment but it's different right and everyone was just adjusting to that environment so the community engagement committee which I'll just call the CEC because it is a mouth, mouthful um they were really critical last year and sort of in enabling us to sort of be really student responsive and, and action things or notice that there were gaps in communication or notice like, oh, okay, this was the feedback that we have. Let's pivot this for the next term and work really closely with our community. So I was super grateful for that. And then in the strangest of ways, that pressure test allowed us to sort of collaborate and innovate more than ever before. And we really had that sense of, right, let's pull together Let's see what we need to do. Let's work together and make this happen so we can support our communities. Yeah, it's good to hear that uh, the community as a whole has kind of come together from this in a way through like new initiatives. I kind of wanted to focus on the Career Accelerator program a bit. Are you able to give a bit of context into what the Career Accelerator is and how it's useful to them? Yeah, so Career Accelerator is exclusive to the business school um, and it's tailored to the expectations of business students industries um, and also just preparing for the future workforce and so we offer a range of experiences um, in internships with local or global industry partners um, industry networking career mentoring and our focus is on two things work integrated learning will which you might have seen that sometimes there's lots of acronyms at uni so will um, and career development and learning and so if I break that down a little bit in the most digestible of definitions, work integrated learning is what you'll see a course code for. So it's a partnered placement and it's supervised and assessed. So it's integrating academic learning with the practice in the workplace. So you'll have a lecturer, for example, who's involved in your experience. You'll have an industry partner who's responsible for supervising your placement, providing feedback, and there's going to be some accessible com components within your course. So that's what work integrated learning is. And career development development learning is basically everything else around that. And that doesn't make it easy because it's not a course. It's actually like this huge umbrella of stuff. Um, and while it's not assessed, it's the stuff that's critical to, to how you develop your skill set. So for example, networking. Networking is a skill that you are not only going to exercise while you're at uni, but for the rest of your career. And it's not going to be a formulaic thing. It's going to be something that you refine and fine tune and develop. And it creates and it really is about that self-awareness and how you're using your, your skills and building your muscles as well. Um, and it could be, for example, working on small projects. So we have a range of business experiences, which are about 25 hours over two weeks, um, cross-disciplinary. So you're with an undergraduate and postgraduate student team partnered with um, an industry partner working on a project in a specific area. So it's a great way to sort of get that um, teamwork experience online, work with um, a different industry. So maybe something that you are kind of dabbling in interest in, but you don't want to do a full course on it. Um, there's virtual internships. We have mentoring programs as well. And even those business insights, um, industry events and industry extras, the options are endless. Yeah, highly encourage anyone to jump onto the Career Accelerator website, sort of gauge their interest around things and yeah drop us an email if you have any questions come and see us at business insights there's there's literally something for everyone especially from what you said with all the programs and initiatives um would you say that the main aim of these programs is to get students just generally more involved and to help them develop the skills that they can't really focus on when they're studying like a theoretical course for example yeah and also, you know, in, in the classroom, you're learning different stuff to when you're outside of the classroom, you know, and I, I guess in some ways it's hard to measure that, you know, what's your networking skill level, you know, that's hard to measure, but it, it's effective for you when you're out out in industry and you're having to network where people get jobs because of how good their networking um, skills are, right? Um, so it's something that while you're studying, you might go, oh, do I have to do that? But it's more like, hey, do this for yourself. You're investing in yourself. Especially after like my current experience at uni, I've noticed there, there is quite a fine line between how much focus um, you should put 
on your studies and like marks, for example, and then also uh, focusing on like getting experience, whether it's like through the societies or engaging in these type of programs, how would you recommend students balance that out? Yeah, look, I mean, I know that we're going to talk about um, the BCom and how that's changed. And I think it's really addressing that. But for students that are still maybe at the tail end of their BCom now, I guess it's really about having that self-awareness and sort of thinking, okay, well, I'm sort of wanting to go into this industry. I'm about midway through my degree. That sounds interesting. Okay, have you had some practice now? Have you gone out there and had a look at that? Engage in that space, right? Because you just want to, it's about that validation, that career discovery. And I think that's in terms of like how much time you should focus. It's kind of a personal thing. Obviously, your um, your coursework is a priority. You want to do the best that you can in your class um, and with your courses, right? But you also want to have that experience because you have to think about when you've graduated, how ready do you feel? Do you know where you're going? And I think that is how you decide what you want to do around your studies. I think, yeah, it definitely depends. Like from the guests that we've had on um, and their experiences, for example, from university to where they are now, everyone's experience is totally different. And like some people, um, for example, got into like startups, for example, but that's like very impromptu at the start because um, it's just an idea, right? And then they they go ahead and uh, try to pursue that idea while also trying to manage their studies. And then and I, I think, um, was it Anna, she mentioned that university is kind of uh, a safe a safe haven. Um, like you can always come back and rediscover what you are passionate about. For her in particular, she um, decided to pursue like growth hacking and marketing. She traditionally wasn't even involved in marketing, but she um, decided to pursue that outside of studies. So I think, yeah, the opportunities are quite endless. Yeah, and I guess it is that sort of those data points again, right? Like as you're doing things, going, right, what do I learn from this? Where, where's my next step, you know? And not being too hard on yourself and stuck in ideals because I think that was my career learning as well. Um, you know, I thought oh, I'm going to work in publishing and it's going to be like this and oh, that's fine. And then you're in it and you're going, oh, hang on, I thought I really wanted to do this. And you start to judge yourself, right? But you have to go back to you know, what your values are, what energizes you, things like that. And that will change throughout your career. Maybe at the beginning you are doing something that you expected and maybe a few years down the track that changes and that's fine too. And that's where that career development learning comes in handy too because you've got your networking skills, you've got, you know, that self-awareness, your communication skills, all of these um, skills that allow you to transition. You know, you're not too sort of boxed in. Coming into uni, a lot of people might think that there is like a set path in a way because you do have designated courses and there are like suitable or I guess careers that are kind of catered towards those um, fields that you study. But it's important, yeah, to like accept that change and know, like you mentioned, data points, like checking yourself along the way, like making sure you're you're happy about where you're going. Um, I think is yeah, really important. Totally. And the business course really focus on that. I mean, look at last year. If you were in industry, you had to sort of pivot. You had to, you know, fall back on those innovative um, skills. You had to be flexible and adaptable. And, and these are all things that you have to, it's a muscle that you're building in practice. So, yeah, that's really key in your career. Yeah, I think also it's like really nice because talking to other guests, like I come to realize like while you're young and still at uni, like a lot of them mention, um, this is like when people are most flexible with what they can really do and focus on. Um, and change really because you have different responsibilities that kind of not necessarily restrict you from pursuing other things but kind of encourage you to focus on a set career path in a way. I think you pretty much asked like answered my question on bridging the gap between like university studies and like careers through the programs that you mentioned but are you able to go into the new BCom degree a little bit? So in general, I guess with the BCom, our um, programs go under regular reviews, right? And so every time they go under a review, we make sure that they're at the forefront of industry research, technology and business practice practices. So with the BCom, this was an opportunity to provide students with greater connection with industry and better align the curriculum to meet industry needs. So there's a real industry focus, yeah? And so there's this integrated first year, which is ensuring that students learn how business problems are interconnected and complex across interdisciplinary courses. Um, and that helps you become well-informed when you're choosing your major because you're already getting that interdisciplinary experience. And then there's my BCom, 
which is a portfolio for students um, and your learning journey. And it's demonstrating your knowledge, your skills and your capabilities and achievements for employers, so two employers. Then there's a compulsory will, so your work integrated learning that we've been um, talking about, that's for credit. So that when you're doing my BCom from here on, that's compulsory. So doing an internship or a practicum, one of those courses um, is compulsory. And then you have a final year synthesis, which is cementing your knowledge um, that you've gained through the BCom and applying it to real world interdisciplinary problems. So just to confirm, are, are restructuring the degrees compulsory as part of the UNSW Business School? The review is. So it always goes under reg regular review. And I think that's for most faculties in general. But there's always a review period where they kind of look back and go, right, let's have a look at our degree. And, and then we align it to different um, areas that we're reviewing and we make sure it's up to industry standard. Um, so, yeah, that's something that the, the BCom was already being reviewed um, and the changes that were made, I guess now it gets a little bit more focused because, you know, everyone's sort of like, ah, am I going to get industry experience? Because the last year was quite disruptive for students. There's a lot of panic of, you know, am I going to be employable, right? I know that last year you might remember when there was all the, the media about the top 10 jobs of the future. And I think it was consulting or something was like, uh, and on a list that was not desirable. And I had so many students going, oh, my God, I wanted to be a consultant. Yeah. I think ultimately when we drill everything down, BCom, or if you're not doing a BCom, it's about what you're doing in class, what are you seeking outside of class, how is that purposeful and aligned to your experience, and when you're getting those data points along your way, are you enabling yourself, maybe pushing yourself a little bit um, outside of your comfort zone so you're getting the best out of your experience while you can, while you're at uni, and you're thinking about that day that you graduate when you walk out of here and you go, am I ready? Do I know where I want to go? Do I know? Yeah. Okay. And you did that for yourself. I think it was when I was first in the first year, so 2020, the government, because I know the government would have quite a close relationship with universities. I can't remember the full like specifics, but it was something around the funding of uh, what university students um, like pay for certain courses and I think they were trying to encourage more students to pursue uh, fields in like science and engineering and maths compared to humanities but what were like your thoughts on that? I was triggered and I still am triggered. Uh, <laughs> um, look I mean I don't even know what to say about that because if I think about my own personal experience I study communications and that's in a faculty of arts, you know, and social sciences, that's in humanities and communication is crucial, you know, and one of the reasons why I actually pursued arts and communications when I was um, choosing my degrees, because I had a, a lovely teacher that was always on my back about doing more units of English, because um, obviously she saw that I was, was good at it, but, um, and she said, do you understand that if you get into communications, you can work in any industry? It doesn't matter because I had so many interests, right? And then she's like, you can work in any industry because communication is a vital skill in those industries. So, yeah, I mean, I, I remember when that came out and I'm not sure I entirely agree. Obviously, there's going to be areas of growth and, yeah, it's good to be across that growth. But I also don't think that we can sit and say that humanities are not useful. Everything has a purpose and a use. And I think what we need to understand is actually the relationship between things. Yeah, I think it is quite like a complicated topic, especially from what we've discussed. Not necessarily like a student who studies one of those degrees is going to be uh, find passion in it. And I guess, yeah, it's uh, ultimately up to like what the student does during and after like their university career in a way. And it's also about what that student wants to get out of their experience, right? Like, I think you define your own success. You define your own um, career pathway. And yeah, you might see a news article which you know, is saying, hey, what you're studying probably isn't that important, which, as I said, still triggers me. But really looking into yourself, okay, well, what do I want to get out of things? What do I really want to do? Because there's a place for that, you know. I would just actually say don't do the opposite, which is, oh, not really interested in that, but I'm going to do that because that's probably what I should do. And then you're not energised and you're studying something that you don't really have a connection with, that's that's actually the opposite that I would say. Yeah, exactly. And then I guess you'd just be wasting your time. Um, are there any other pieces of advice that you want to give to students currently at university? Yeah, look, um, while you're studying, and I, again, will lean on my experience, you want to make the time that you have here useful. And that doesn't necessarily mean doing everything. It just means being smart about what you get involved in and if something just flickers your interest 
go and have a look at it because this is the playground. This is where you get to try all that stuff out. So that would be my advice to students is make the most of what you have. At the business school, you have so many opportunities, yeah, to engage in Career Accelerator and also within our um, affiliated societies. So we have 26 societies that are working really closely with us at the business school and with the schools. And every single one has different sort of portfolios that they tap into. Some of them are cross-disciplinary. Some of them are looking at business and tech, for example. Um, Or some of them are just you know, you might end up finding someone that you're going to work with for the next five years, you know, like there's so much value in things that you might not have considered or you might be resisting because you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Just take this time, go and do those things. Yeah. And I guess you definitely don't know if you like something until you try it. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to say before we wrap up? I guess um, there's been some questions sometimes about like the transferable skills online right? Because um, last year in particular, there was so much being done online. It's like, hey, is this of any value? Um, Because I guess we're still stuck in that mindset of, oh, the high value stuff is in person and the online stuff is temporary. And I guess I just want students to understand that our shift online is not just in the university. Organisations have had this similar shift online. And many organisations are now adapting to that for the future and offering flexibility. And, you know, things like networking skills online, teamwork online, communication online, building general, um, building genuine relationships that are not transactional online, you know, cross-cultural skills, information management and privacy. This is all stuff online that's going to be really important for your future. So don't discount anything that you've done last year because you're like, oh, but that was online. Yeah, it's definitely a good point to raise, especially with a lot of workplaces switching to a hybrid model where employees get the option to work from home or in the office. Just wrapping up now, it's been nice to chat with you about the different aspects of uni, uh, including careers. And yeah, thanks. Thank you, Adrian. It was lovely to be here. And um, All the best.